there was a lot of demand for working drawings of the tiny tool grinder, and recently, Thomas Kemmerer offered to make them based on the photos I took for him. I must honestly say that the result is astonishing. So beautiful. So complete. I know he put a lot of time and love into it. All for free. Thank you, Thomas. Let me start with a little show of the 3D capabilities that the free eDrawing viewer from SolidWorks offers. I will also put the download link in the description. In addition to these beautiful 3D drawings, Thomas has made 2D working drawings with dimensions of all parts. The base plate is made of cold rolled steel. The thickness is important in the sense that it provides mass and stability. Four soft rubber anti-slip feet are glued under this plate. Note that a sturdy wave spring is included in the clamping mechanism. The clamping levers are not drawn. You can find suitable ones in your country. The other parts of the base are made of a hardenable type of steel, and instead of the steel rings, you can choose bronze or brass. Here is one of the nine working drawings that Thomas made of the base and its parts. There is some room for improvement on the engine column. It wasn't until well into construction that I realized that rotating the column was a desirable option. For this, I made a ring in which the set screws fit so that the bronze wedges can be tightened. Without this ring, there would be too little meat for threading. Of course, a column with a thicker bottom end is a better option. You will also have to use your brain to choose and install the DC motor. They come in many shapes and sizes. The requirements are an axle of at least 8 mm thick, at least 200 watts of motor power, and a minimum of 5,000 and a maximum of 10,000 RPM. I will place a link in the description. And of course, a mounting plate must be made with which the front of the motor can be mounted firmly and accurately to the bearing housing. there is not much special to say about the bed. The large chamfer on the left makes it possible to get a little closer to the diamond wheel at larger grinding angles. What is missing here, but also elsewhere in the design, are wipers or another way to prevent the grinding dust from creeping between the sliding surfaces. I really have to do something about this, because now I have to carefully remove all the grinding dust after every grinding job. The saddle is made of cold rolled steel. The size on the right is important. The saddle should be slightly shorter on that side than the bed, so that the top right clamp bolt can be used to clamp the saddle against the protruding side of the bed to block the y-axis. There are a few small errors in this 3D view. The order of the parts of the clamping mechanism is mixed up. The bronze wedges press against the dovetail. The POM cylinders against the wedges 
and the set screws against the POM cylinders. The POM intermediate cylinders are there so that the pressing force of the wedges can be varied slightly. The top slide, a sort of compound slide, and its components are shown here. Making it, and its many parts, is labor-intensive. The diameter and the distance between the holes in the turntable are of great importance. The two pins of the tool holders should later fit into this without any play. The holes are placed in such a way that there are four options for placing the tool holders and fixing them with the top clamp. Note that the turntable is locked via two 45-degree bronze press wedges by tightening a locking screw. The horizontal O-ring is a glitch in the software. It is located between the scale ring and the handwheel so that the scale can be adjusted. The simple top clamp can be mounted in two positions on the turntable, while facilitating three positions of the tool holders. The ER16 tool holder must be made with great precision. You want to be able to rotate the workpiece smoothly and without any play. The placement of the two pins is also very precise. You are, of course, free to make the ER16 holder, including the nut yourself, but I bought a complete holder with collets and modified the holder to fit in this housing. I will place a link in the description. There is a POM cylinder between the blocking screw and the collet holder so that the collet holder doesn't get marred up by the screw. The housing of the square tool holder is the same as the ER16 holder, but instead of the collet holder, there are two shells, round on the outside, perpendicular on the inside. The shells shown here are for 8mm square tool bits. It is very easy to adapt these for 10mm, and if necessary, even for 12mm tool bits. However, the 15mm hole in the housing will have to be correspondingly larger. Okay, we are coming to the end of this 3D presentation of the tiny tool grinder. It is important to realize that this is not a ready-made, fully developed construction kit. In contrast to replicating the well-known construction kits of, for example, Hemingway, much more is required from one's own technical insight, and it's entirely possible that you'll see some improvements for yourself. In any case, Facilities to stop the swarf between the ways are very desirable. And who knows, you might even come up with some useful extensions yourself, such as a rig to sharpen the flutes of a mill. The used diamond discs can be purchased at not too high a cost. I'll put a link for that in the description. In addition to seven 3D drawings, Thomas also made 77 working drawings with measurements, a major job for which I cannot thank him enough. Send me an email and I will send you the files you want. 
The 3D drawings are 25 megabytes in size and require the free viewer and Windows 10 or 11. The drawings are in PDF format and a total of 5 megabytes in size. All drawings are available for free. Enjoy. If you would like to give something in return, do something for the children who need it so desperately and donate something to WarChild.